Okay, boys and girls, let's listen to our memory verse today by Rick. Hey kids, it's a memory verse today. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the word with our dying heart. Bye! Today, Alice will be singing a song for us. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust the precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me, wilt be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, for grace to trust him more. The Bible says that God wants us to love him and serve him with all thy heart. This reminds me of a verse in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. The Bible says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This further reminds me of three important H words, head, heart, and hands. Well, the head means your mind. You need to give your mind to God. You need to think the right thoughts, and you need to think, I want to love and serve God. Secondly, the heart. The heart means the Oh, it's the real you that's inside. So the thoughts in your head about loving and serving God needs to go from your head down to your heart where you begin to feel love for God. Well, the next one is the hands. And that's the last one. When you think in your head, I want to love and serve God, and then you begin to feel that love for God in your heart, you will also want to show God's love to others in the things that you do. It will show in what you do for God and what you do for others. It's your actions. Can you act and love God? Today, we're going to continue our lesson on Elijah. But first, we're going to take a little review we are talking about how God used the prophet Elijah. God spoke to Elijah and told him to go and speak to King Ahab. Now, Ahab, if you remember, was a very wicked king. And he and his wife Jezebel, they worshipped the false god, Baal. And Ahab also led the nation of Israel in worshipping the false god. So, Elijah went to speak with King Ahab. Well, Elijah told the king that God was going to stop sending the rain. That was not good news for the king. That was not good news for the people. When there is no rain for a long time, there's no water to drink. There's no water for the people. There's no water for the animals. And pretty soon, there's not much food to eat either. Without food and water, the people cannot live. But God was trying to get their attention. He was trying to... To turn them away from their false gods and to turn them back to him. God loves the people and God wants them to worship him. Well, do you remember what God told Elijah to do? He told him to go hide by the brook. And there God would provide Elijah with water. And God would also send the ravens or birds with food and meat 
so that Elijah could eat. Oh, God was so good in taking care of Elijah. First of all, let's look because we're going to see that the brook dries up. Now, God was taking great care of Elijah daily. He provided the food. He provided water. But one day when Elijah went down to the brook, when he took his cup down there, there was no water. The brook had dried up. There had been no rain in such a long time. And today, the brook was dry. There was no water for Elijah to drink. First Kings chapter 17, verse 7 says, And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Boys and girls, do you think that God had forgotten about Elijah? Do you think that God had stopped caring for Elijah? I don't think so. I know God didn't stop caring for Elijah. I think Elijah kept on trusting God to take care of him. Remember a Bible verse from last week says in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7, casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. Elijah knew that God would not let him go thirsty. He knew that God would provide for him. Well, second, we see a new place that God has chosen. God had not forgotten about Elijah. Instead, God had another plan. God had another place that he wanted Elijah to be. The place that God was sending Elijah was to the home of a widow. I'm sure she had very little money. You see, her husband had died. And it had been difficult for her to find a way to take care of herself and to take care of her little boy. Oh, this seems like a strange place for God to send Elijah. Do you suppose that God somehow made a mistake? Don't you think that God should have sent him to the home of someone who was, was rich and could afford water and, and food and all that kind of stuff? How was this poor widow woman going to take care of Elijah? Well, I think God was planning on showing both Elijah and his poor woman how wonderfully he could care for them. Even during these hard times. Even when there wasn't much water and much food. Well, Elijah listened to God. Elijah got right up and he went to the city where God had commanded him to go. When he got to the city, he looked around. And pretty soon he found the woman that God had sent him to. Oh, she was hard at work. She was outside. She was picking up sticks. She was getting ready to build a, a fire, a campfire of some sort, uh, so that she could cook some food for her and her son. Well, Elijah spoke to the woman. He asked her to go get him something to drink. Now, water was very precious. It was scarce. There wasn't much water anywhere. And here was Elijah asking for a drink. Do you think the woman, do you think she'll go and get, get some water for Elijah? Well, she did right away. It says she turned to get him something to drink. Then, just as she turned to get some water for Elijah, he speaks again. This time, he asks this, this woman, he says, bring me some bread to eat. So he not only asked her for water, but he asked her for some bread to eat. First Kings chapter 17, verse 10 through 11 says, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. Oh, the widow was going to get some water for Elijah. But when he asked her to bring some bread, she stopped. Why did she stop? Well, let's look at 1 Kings in, in verse 12 here, it says, and she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a crows. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it 
and die. This woman, she said, Elijah, I hear what you want. I know you want something to drink. I know you want something to eat. But I don't have very much at all. I was going to build this fire. My son and I was going to have a drink and have a meal. And then we were just going to starve. We were just going to die. They didn't have much. Oh, she thought that after she had cooked the bread over this little fire, that she would eat just a little food, just, just a little bit. That's all they had for her and her son. And then they would just starve to death. Well, Elijah gives her assurance. Elijah told the woman that the God of Israel would take care of her. God would give her the flour, would give her the oil that she needed, not just for that day, but also for all the days until the rain began again. Wow, to hear that promise, Elijah is saying to this woman, hey, God's going to take care of you. God's going to give you some flour. God's going to give you oil. God's going to give you water. You're not going to starve. You're going to have plenty. And Elijah said unto her, fear not. Go and do as thou hast said. But make thee thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me. And after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel. The barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. The widow trusts. The widow trusted. Oh, this woman was not an Israelite woman. She was not one of God's people. But I'm sure that she heard about God of Israel. And I think she knew that the false gods that the king and her people were worshiping, they were of no help. They don't exist, really. They're, they're just fake. First King, uh, verse 16 says, And when she went and did, according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her home did eat many days. The Bible says that this woman listened, that she obeyed. She obeyed God. She obeyed what Elijah told her. And she had plenty to eat, plenty of flour, plenty of bread, plenty of water. The widow lady, she was amazing. She was poor. And she must have been worried about her son. She believed that her and her son would both die of hunger. And yet this woman was willing to give the last of her food and water to Elijah. She was willing to obey God. She was willing to give the last of her food to the stranger who came to her, Elijah. She could have told Elijah, go away. She could have refused to trust God. But she chose instead to trust God. Boys and girls, you know, the one thing that God wants of you and of me and of all of us is to love and to serve him with all of our heart. Are you serving the Lord? Do you love the Lord? You know, God wants you to love him and to serve him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your might. He wants to love. He wants us to love. He wants us to obey him. And he wants us to do it with all of our heart. Do you love God? Do you obey God? I pray that you do. But if you don't, you can get right with God. Right now, you can just call upon God and tell God that you love him, that you'll serve him. The Bible says he careth for you. But more importantly, boys and girls, let me ask you this question. Have you ever trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? Have you ever asked Jesus to come into your heart. The Bible tells us. That Jesus loves us so much. That he came to this earth. And he went to the cross. And died on the cross for our sins. 
You know, sin is lying, it's cheating, it's disobedience, it's anything that displeases God. And the Bible says we, we have all sinned, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And there's a payment because of that sin, for the wages of sin is death. It's being separated from God forever and ever. But Jesus Christ took the payment. He took the punishment that we deserve. And the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Have you called upon Jesus Christ? Have you asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart? If you have not, go to your mom. Go to your dad right now and ask him, Show me in the Bible. How, Mom, show me in the Bible how I can know for sure that I'm going to heaven. Do that today. Serve the Lord God with all your heart. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for these boys and girls. We thank you for God who cares for us. We thank you for a God that loves us. We thank you for a God that has saved us. We thank you for our God that wants us to love him back and to serve him. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Hi, boys and girls, and welcome back to Children's Church. Today we're here with my friend Valerie. Hi, Gavin. Do you have some questions for me? Yes. The first question is, what did Elijah ask the widow woman to give him? He asked for a little bit of water. Good job. What did the woman tell Elijah when he asked for bread too? Oh, she said, I only have a handful of meal and only a little oil. What did Elijah tell the woman God would do? He said that he would not allow the meal to spoil and the oil would not fail. Good job. How long did God say the flour and oil would last? He said it would last until he sent rain. The last question is, was the widow willing to give all she had to Elijah? Yes, she was. Isn't it cool how God provided for the widow? Bye, see you next week. <laughs>